What's up, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of Da Vinci Cases. All right, so the way this works is we've got a clinical case followed by a board style question. So we're going to go through the question stem, point out the relevant clinical findings, take a look at the question and the answer choices, and then kind of divert for a minute and go through the relevant concepts to answering the question. Then we'll come back and apply those concepts that we went over to answering the question. All right, everybody, welcome back to Da Vinci Cases. Um, so we have a special uh, dermatology series here for you. And we actually have a medical student from the University of Alabama, Sydney Weir, helping us. So hi, Sydney. Thanks for uh, doing these cases with us. Hi, Maxwell. Thanks for having me. So yeah, maybe just tell us a little bit about yourself uh, before we get started. Sure. So again, my name is Sydney. I'm a student at UAB Hearsink School of Medicine. I am a rising fourth year going into dermatology. And so glad to be here with you guys to just, you know, give some advice on how to tackle these dermatology questions. Awesome. Awesome. We're happy to have you. And, uh, you know, that I'm, I don't do as much dermatology these days now that I'm a radiology resident. So I'm, I'm happy to have someone who's, uh, really, really into dermatology and can give the best explanation possible for our, our viewers and listeners for these. So let's, let's kick into the case if you're ready. Yeah, sounds good. So oh, here we have this question. We have a 15 year old female presenting to clinic with a new rash. She noticed the rash on her stomach while showering in a locker room after swim practice two weeks ago and states that it started to become itchy and spread. So this, or this sentence that we just walked through actually has a lot of information that can kind of point us um, to a differential already. So, you know, locker room, swim practice, those two things sort of point us that this could be an infectious cause just because um, it's insinuating that there maybe there could be some skin to skin contact here. Um, this female is an athlete, so she's probably exposed to hot and humid environments, um, often sweating. So this puts um, two things really high on our differential, tinea versicolor and tinea corporis. Um, so let's keep going. So her younger brother who shares the same bathroom with her has a similar rash. Again, this is kind of just hammering home that skin to skin contact is probably um, how she got this rash. So on exam, she's got three to four erythematous scaly plaques with central clearing that are scattered across the abdomen. And one of the lesions is shown in the image below. So in this image here, you can see that classic sort of annular shape um, that's very erythematous. And then you've got this central area that is clear, almost looks like the same kind of normal skin she has surrounding the lesion. And this is found on the abdomen. So the question says, a scraping is taken for a potassium hydroxide preparation. And what is likely to be observed under the microscope? So let's just go ahead and highlight these key findings and then we'll go through a little differential. So again, we've got this young female who's a swimmer with a new onset rash on her abdomen. This rash is slowly spreading and she's got a close contact with a similar rash. Um, it's symptomatic. And then on physical exam, we've got that erythematous scaly plaque with central clearing. So all of these clues sort of point us to this differential with tinea corporis being at the top. Then we've got tinea versicolor, pityriasis rosea, atopic derm or eczema, and then psoriasis. So the most likely um, answer or explanation for this rash is actually gonna be tinea corporis. And we'll go ahead and, and walk through why, um, and then we'll kind of explain those microscopic findings. A little gotcha. bit later. So a yeah. quick question for you, Cindy. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you did a great job walking them through the case, summarizing. What's just your general advice for like these, these types of questions? I think you touched on it. It seems like kind of exposures, uh, you know, what, what the patient may have been exposed to. And then also it sounds the dermatological exam is obviously very important. I guess any other kind of tips or tricks when walking through these types of question stems? I feel like a lot of the derm questions, you really can get the full picture from the stem. The, the picture that they usually include doesn't really give you too much more. 
Um, so I think that the biggest things to focus on when you're going through the derm questions are the, um, I guess, clinical vignette, the backstory. They'll usually give you a lot of clues like locker room, swim practice, um, pet exposure. Those are all sort of things that they'll try to sprinkle through the question stem. And then I guess the physical exam findings are, are more of just like, you know, little tidbits. All right, cool. So why don't you, uh, thanks for that explanation. Now, why don't you kind of take us through some of the, the differential here uh, with some of those subsequent slides you have. Yeah, so let's go ahead. Um, so let's just start off going through the um, causes that are lower on the differential. So starting off with pityriasis rosea. So the cause of pityriasis rosea is unknown, but Usually in a question stem, it's preceded by a viral or bacterial infection. So maybe a patient comes in with a cold and then they have um, this new onset rash. And so typically pityriasis rosea will start off with this primary herald patch, which is actually shown here in the picture. Um, and you can see that it's sort of annular in shape. It's salmon pink to red, and it's usually just like a peripheral um, annular lesion on the abdomen. And this will go away and then actually they'll get a secondary rash that causes scattered lesions all over the trunk. Um, and that's classically seen here. It's, it might be described as a Christmas tree pattern. Um, and there's no real, uh, they don't do a KOH prep for this. It's just a clinical diagnosis and then it goes away on its own. Um, so I guess key things to look for in a question on pityriasis rosea would be that primary herald patch and then um, maybe a preceding viral infection. And then going to discoid eczema, was just, which is just a specific subset of atopic dermatitis. Um, this is just a chronic inflammatory skin disease. Usually patients will get multiple itchy coin-shaped lesions um, the reason why this is on the differential because, you know, that picture they gave us this coin shaped lesion. And so that also, um, discoid eczema could also appear like that. And the thing that differentiates this one is that it could be more, um, could appear with more crusting, um, also itchy, but you don't do a KOH prep to diagnose eczema. It's just a clinical diagnosis and you'll treat it with topical steroids. And then going to psoriasis. So psoriasis can also look like um, an annular lesion as we saw in the question stem. But as you can tell, there's a lot of different ways that psoriasis can come up. Um, so here's just an example on a skin of color patient. You've got hyperpigmented sort of sharply demar demarcated plaques, and they're usually found on the extensor surfaces. So that's another clue um, that the patient in our question stem likely doesn't have psoriasis because her lesions popped up on the abdomen, whereas psoriasis usually on um, board style questions will pop up on extensor surfaces. And so now for the two, um, causes that are high up on our differential. We've got tinea corporis and tinea versicolor. So tinea corporis, this is caused by a dermatophyte infection. So the three dermatophytes that you should know for your boards are microsporum, trichophyton, and epidermophyton. And actually I've seen some questions on this. Trichophyton rubrum is the most common dermatophyte um, to cause infection. So I would definitely note that little tidbit. Um, and so tinea corporis is typically spread by skin to skin contact. And so in question stems, you'll usually get um, those, bud word, those buzzwords like, you know, an athlete got this infection, usually a wrestler, um, can also be acquired from pets. And so they might hint that a family has a dog in the house. And so that, you know, child could get a tinea corporis infection from their pet. Now, these lesions are typically annular. You've got that raised scaly border and then the central clearing. So that's classically um, how these present. And to diagnose tinea corporis, you'll go ahead and do, do a KOH prep, which we'll talk a little bit about more after this. Um, and you'll see hyphae on the prep. 
And then treatment just is a topical antifungal. Sometimes these cases can get a little complicated, but for board's purposes, just know antifungal, like the azoles are how you treat this. And then here we have tinea, tinea versicolor. So tinea versicolor and tinea corporis, they sound very similar, but actually tinea versicolor is not a dermatophyte infection. It's caused by a yeast called Malassezia furfur. And another name for tinea versicolor is actually pityriasis versicolor. So you might see them called both things. And then to further complicate things, pityriasis versicolor is not related to pityriasis rosea. So just try to keep those kind of separated. But um, so tinea versicolor, usually asymptomatic. It just looks a lot more dramatic in some patients exacerbated by hot and humid climates or excessive sweating. So in a swimming, in a, in a patient who's a swimmer, they could be predisposed to tinea versicolor. Um, so it's just something good to think about. But these lesions typically present as salmon color. They could be light brown, hypopigmented macules. And so there's a lot of different ways that this can present. And so you can see on this lighter patient here, um, you can see the places where they did not tan versus the places they did tan. And then in this patient with a little bit darker skin tone, they actually have hyperpigmented macules. And so you can see how they can present differently. And you also do a KOH prep to diagnose tinea versicolor. But what you see on the prep is short hyphae and spores, also classically known as the spaghetti and meatballs finding. And um, to treat this, you'll go ahead and do a topical antifungal just like you would in a tinea infection. Quick question, Sydney. That, that was a great overview. You know, like you said, these, these sound similar and, and maybe even have uh, similar etiology, but it, sound, it seems like kind of the, the two main things are like kind of the visual appearance, at least that's like to me the most striking. Um, mm -hmm. And then, but it seems like the exposure can be a little bit similar, like you kind of alluded to um, both like skin to skin. So is it really kind of just a visual diagnosis or is there, or is there, or is, or is there more to come on, on how to differentiate these two? Yeah. So that's a great question. So the physical exam findings are definitely key to differentiating these two, but sometimes in the question sense, they'll also give you the KOH prep findings and that will also differentiate these as well. Um, but definitely if they give you these images in the question, you can definitely see the difference because tinea versicolor presents a lot differently and you don't usually get one singular lesion as you would with a tinea corpus. Gotcha. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All righty. So kind of going on to our KUH preps. So these are usually used to differentiate fungal infections. And so with the question stem, they told you they got the KOH prep. They were kind of already telling you that this is a fungal infection. What are we gonna find? So that was a nice clue they gave you. Um, and how they'll do this in the clinic is they'll actually just scrape the, the area where there's active infection. And then they'll put that on a slide and look at it under the microscope. And so here's some things that you could see. So this first image here, um, let me see if I can pull up my spotlight here and show you guys. Okay, so this filamentous sort of rod right here, this is called a hyphae. And then you see this little branch point, that's actually the septate. Um, so this is an example of a septate hyphae. And in the background, all these little cells right here are all squamous cells. And this is a classic finding of a dermatophyte infection. And moving to this one, um, so you can see these little, these little cells here. They almost look like budding yeasts, but they actually have uh, these long kind of filamentous, hyphae looking things coming off of them. And um, this is an example of a pseudohyphae. They're actually elongated yeast cells. Um, and this is a classic uh, picture of a candida infection. And I've definitely had some urals questions pop up of this exact um, pic picture. So it's definitely fair game on the test. So I would definitely know 
be familiar with that. And then here are just a couple more. So this, this blue photo here is these little clusters right here of cells. You can kind of see that they almost look like meatballs. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. And then you've got a background of kind of long filamentous rods, and that's your spaghetti. And so this is your classic microscopic finding of tinea versicolor, your spaghetti and meatballs. And at the top here is just an example of a broad based budding of a blasto infection. And this last one would be an example of narrow base budding. So I, I added these here because they were in the, um, the answer choices. And so, but they're not a KOH preparation, but they're just really classic um, microscopic findings for you to know for your boards. So going back to the question, um, I think y'all probably know the answer at this point, but it is hyphae um, because this question stem is an example of um, tinea corporis and we will see hyphae of uniform width um, in this type of dermatophyte infection. And then just quickly to go through the rest of the answer choices. So the short hyphae and spores, that's our spaghetti and meatballs, that would be malassezia fervor for infection. Pseudohyphae would be candida, and, that, and an example of that would be inner trigo. This is where you get sort of a, yeast, a candidal infection in the um, skin folds. So you can see it under the breast, in the groin area, underneath the panis. And it's usually super bright red in the older population. And then you've got narrow base budding or cryptosporidium and then broad-based bunning causing blasto. And these two present totally differently than this first picture. But yep, that's just the quick summary. Great, that was a great summary. Thanks, uh, Sydney, appreciate that. And um, just a couple of questions more for you. Um, you know, these are some really great images you were able to share with us. Uh, tell us a little about uh, where you got these from. Yeah, so I got these images from the UAB Digital Dermatology Atlas. And what this is, is a free online resource for medical students and physicians in training to have access of common skin conditions across diverse skin types. And the whole goal of this atlas is to, um, you know, increase diversity and inclusion in medical education. Great, great. Um, no, I think this is, I've, I've looked through your, your image atlas, uh, and it, this is a great resource. I, I highly recommend you guys all check this out. Um, we've got the link there on the, on, the, on the slide, and then we'll put it in the uh, show notes in the description as well. Um, because I remember when I was a medical student, it was hard to find like a good collection of dermatology images. So thank you, Sydney, to you and your colleagues for putting this together. This is a great resource. Yeah, thank you. It's been a really great project. And if anyone has any great dermatological findings for that they want to submit and share with the world go ahead and check out our website and we're still collecting images great great and then lastly where, where can people uh, find you Sydney and, and reach out to you if they want to if they want to work with you or work on the digital atlas or yeah for sure so anyone who's interested my twitter is Sydney A. Weir and same thing with my instagram um, you can feel free to DM me on either of those platforms and I'd love to connect and talk about anything during. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. We'll put those uh, in the description as well. Well, thank you, Sydney. Um, and we look forward to uh, a few more cases from you as well in this uh, dermatology series from Da Vinci Cases. Yep. Thank you so much. All right. I'll see y'all. All right. That's all I have for you this time. Be sure to check out all the Da Vinci Cases videos available on our YouTube channel and our website, dviacademy.com. The PDF notes for every DaVinci Cases is also available on our website. Also be sure to check out our podcast, The DaVinci Hour, where we interview attendings and residents across medicine to learn more about their experiences, their specialties, and to get their insights on navigating a career in medicine. You can find The DaVinci Hour podcast on our website or any platform where podcasts are found. Lastly, you can find all of our video courses and corresponding outline form of books on our website. Don't forget to use the discount code DC20 for 20% off.